Hello, today I'm sharing my current skincare routine at 48 years old that keeps my skin balanced, hydrated, and healthy. I don't currently have Botox or fillers, and some things that I may do or not do may seem a bit weird or unconventional, but they work for me. I don't have foundation, bronzer, or blush on my face today. I just wanted you to see my skin as I'm sitting here talking to you. I do have concealer under my eyes because I wanted to look somewhat alive today, and I have minimal eye makeup on and something on my lips and I do have some translucent powder nearby just to cut any shine that may break through as I'm sitting here filming but that will still allow you to see my skin showing through I felt like that was just important for this video today I feel like as we get older it's harder to find a balance between a simplified routine and replenishing and giving our skin what it needs to maintain elasticity suppleness and an intact moisture barrier as key nutrients in our skin deplete with age so as we go through this video I'll share with you why I look for specific ingredients that I do. I have sensitive skin with rosacea, so you may see some redness coming through in some of the clips when I'm washing my face or applying products. That's just what happens. Our skin can become more sensitive and irritation prone with age. For many of us, myself included, it's hard to find products that give visible results that are also gentle on our skin, especially when it comes to treatment products like retinoids, which is kind of the gold standard for anti-aging, right? It seems you have to have substandard results to not get that irritation or you have to suffer with peeling dryness and a compromised skin barrier. The retinoid I've been using for about six months and have had great results with with no irritation whatsoever that I've shared numerous times here on my channel is Medicaid Crystal Retinol. I know a lot of you love this too. They reached out to me recently asking about partnering with me for a portion of one of my videos. I immediately thought about this one because I've been using this religiously in my skincare routine. Routine. So I'm excited to partner with them today for a portion of today's video. Once we get to the nighttime part of this routine, I'll share more details about this product that I adore and the three main reasons why it works so well for me and for so many others. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Let's start with the morning part of my skincare routine and then move into the nighttime. My first basic skincare step in the morning is cleansing my face. Now, whether it's morning or night, if I'm taking a shower, I'll cleanse my face in the shower, but I'm not showing you that. I'm showing you at my sink with my handy wristbands on that prevent water from dripping down all over my countertop, all down the fronts of my cabinets. I think I got these from Amazon. I'll source them and list them in my description box and in my top pinned comment for you, along with all the products I'm sharing today. I massage my cleanser in for a good 40 to 60 seconds, probably closer to 60 seconds. I never thought to mention this in a skincare routine before. I thought it was something people just did, but I started seeing this here and there on social media, on TikTok, started seeing dermatologists recommend it, and I realized I don't think this is something a lot of people do, but it keeps my skin clearer, brighter, my pores less clogged, it keeps my pores minimized. My skin doesn't get dry or tight because I don't use stripping cleansers. It's important to use a cleanser that's appropriate for your skin type. My skin is combination normal around the perimeter and can get dry, especially in cooler months, and I can get some shine and oil breakthrough in the center, especially in warmer months. The cleanser you're seeing me use in this clip is Tatcha the Rice Wash, which is a staple holy grail cleanser for me that always gets rotated in even when I'm testing or using other cleansers. I'll have other options for products I'm sharing at various price points for all skin types because I know there are all different budgets and obviously everyone has a different skin type. You don't have to use what I'm sharing with you. You don't have to do everything I'm doing in this video. This is just what's working for me personally right now. If you're not seeing some products in this video that I've said I enjoy in the past, it doesn't mean I don't enjoy or like those products. It's impossible to use every single thing I've ever said I like. These are just what's in my rotation right now. This next step is probably optional, especially if you're doing some of the other things to follow, but I find it to be very refreshing, especially in the morning. So this is the Indy Lee Coenzyme Q10 Toner. It's got aloe and hyaluronic acid, and I enjoy either spritzing this onto my face, neck, and chest directly or onto a cotton round 
and then patting or swiping it on. It gives antioxidant protection and it also hydrates and soothes. And I just, I really enjoy doing this next. Again, it's probably an optional step, but it does give some benefits and some deep hydration. And it's very lightweight and disappears into your skin. Plus a bottle lasts a really long time. The next step in my morning skincare routine is usually a peptide serum. I say usually for a specific reason. I'll share that here in a second. Peptides are a fixture in my skincare routine and they should be in yours too if you're not incorporating them already. Now, I recently did a video about at-home alternatives for Botox and filler. I shared devices and tools and specific ingredients that can really make a difference with improving fine lines and wrinkles and plumpness and elasticity in your skin. Peptides are high up on that list for me. I go more in depth in that video. I'll have it linked up in the corner and at the end of this video as well as in my description box in my top pin comment. So you can check out that video after you finish this one. But in a nutshell, peptides are amino acids that penetrate our skin to repair and and rebuild damaged cells to rebuild collagen and elastin and help with wrinkles and dullness, loss of firmness and elasticity, and help your skin look more plump, healthy, and youthful. They're great for anyone of any age with any skin type, and they work extremely well with other products, even other actives, and they can be used in the morning or the evening or both. And because they stimulate collagen and elastin that occurs naturally within the body, they can give some fantastic long-term anti-aging results. Now, I'm just holding this up as an example. I'm actually almost finished with this one. This is Glow Recipe Pomegranate Peptide Firming serum. I have other options listed down below. All the peptide serums that I've used have been very light and kind of watery. They absorb into the skin very, very quickly and are very hydrating yet extremely lightweight at the same time. If for some reason there's a category in this video where you're not seeing a more affordable kind of drugstore option, it's because I just haven't found one that I liked enough to be able to recommend it to you. So if you know of one for a specific category that you love, please let me know in the comments so I can test it out. I found so many great products from your suggestion, so I would really, really appreciate appreciate that. So the reason why I said earlier I usually apply my peptide serum at that point is because you always want to apply your lotions and serums and treatment products in order from thinnest to thickest. So you want to apply your more watery products and then your lotions and then your creams kind of in that order. So depending on which product my peptide or my vitamin C serum is more watery in texture, I'll apply that one first. Now because these are my most most commonly used vitamin C products right now. My peptide serums are more watery, so they're usually being applied first. So this is Paula's Choice 25% Vitamin C Glutathione Clinical Serum. This is her newest vitamin C product, and this is Colleen Rothschild Vitamin C Brightening Serum. This is sold out quite a bit. These are both highly stabilized vitamin C serums, so you don't have to really worry about them going bad on your shelf like you do a lot of them. They don't smell like hot dogs like a lot of vitamin C serums do. They both have kind of a light lotion serum-y texture and work really well under makeup and feel really lightweight too. These are just two that I've really been enjoying for that antioxidant protection to protect from free radical damage and to kind of brighten my skin over time. Now being completely transparent, there are days where I need to streamline things and I just don't end up applying my vitamin C. I never skip cleansing my face or applying my peptide or my sunscreen moisturizer. A lot of times that's a hybrid product. Sometimes this does get skipped by me or I apply a hybrid product that includes vitamin C. It's probably not the best thing in the world, but I'm, I'm keeping it honest with you. I think we all know at this point we need to be wearing sunscreen under our makeup during the day. It's hard to find good sunscreens that are cosmetically elegant, that wear well under makeup, especially with the amount you need to wear. One fourth of a teaspoon for your face is the recommended amount more if you're also adding it to your neck and chest, which you should be. What I like to do is apply half the amount, massage it in, and then apply the rest in a, a layering fashion. You still get the protection, but it's just an easier way to 
layer it so that it sinks in easier without it feeling all gooped up in one thick layer on my face. So the two sunscreens I have here that have vitamin C are Bare Minerals Skin Longevity Phyto Vitamin C Brightening Moisturizer. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 30. And we have Derma E Vitamin C Weightless Moisturizer. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 45. So if you're wanting kind of everything and vitamin C, these will give you that. And these are some that I'll have listed down below as well as um, Innisfree is one that I'm just out of right now. I think it runs around $16 that are also good options that give me moisturizing benefits as well as sunscreen. And there are others also that are down below that you can check out too. Now, if it's a really gloomy, thunderstormy type of day and I'm staying inside, or if it's nighttime and I don't need a sunscreen, I vary my moisturizer based on the type of look I'm going for. I'll use a more mattifying type of moisturizer if I'm wanting to cut shine or if I'm wearing a more glowy type of foundation so I don't get too, too glowy. There's this one from Laura Pose and then this one from polished choice. Both of these have niacinamide and I feel like we hear about niacinamide so much, but we don't really talk about what it does. It's very soothing and anti-inflammatory, very calming. It's great for sensitive skin, great for those of you with rosacea. It helps calm irritation, redness, balance skin and oil production, reduce the look of pores, reduce breakouts. It strengthens the skin barrier. Unless you have a specific irritation to it, it's great to incorporate into your skincare routine because most people tolerate it really well. And I know some days I do feel like my pores look better than others. And if there are days when they're not looking so good, I do like to reach for a moisturizer that has some niacinamide in it or a primer or something. Two others that I've really been enjoying rotating in for daytime are this one from Polish Choice. This is the Rescue and Repair Intensive Moisturizer. This has kind of a cream gel consistency and is nice and hydrating. And then this one from The Ordinary. This is the Natural Moisturizing Factors with Beta Glucan. Very hydrating with a gel consistency at least for my combination skin. You wanna be sure and let your sunscreen sink in a good 10 to 20 minutes before you apply anything over it. Now this is where we might get a little controversial. So you've probably heard people say that your sunscreen should be the last step of your skincare. I've said that, but I also haven't mentioned eye cream yet. Most people say to apply your eye cream, eye serum, whatever eye product it is under your sunscreen and your sunscreen should be after that. But having such dry under eyes, I find that if I apply my eye product and then apply sunscreen over it, it just negates all of that hydration. So I let my sunscreen fully sink in and then go in with my eye product, which in this case is an eye serum. This is the Ordinary Multi-Peptide Eye Serum. I also really love the Niod Fractionated Eye Concentrate. It's in the same bottle. I think that's the right name. It's a little bit more intensive than this one. I do have a bottle waiting for me for when this runs out. I find doing it that way allows my sunscreen to still work the way it's supposed to, and I still get the hydration that I need from my eye product. I'm sure someone will come at me, but it's been working for me for years now doing it this way. And that's what I do. It's what works for me. I now apply my lip plumper to prep my lips for when I'm finished with my makeup. And if I remember, I apply my brow growth serum. Sometimes this doesn't happen in the morning. Sometimes it does. Although my nighttime skincare routine starts the same as morning, it is a bit different. I always double cleanse at night. It's so much more effective than going in with a single cleanser. I massage either a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil onto my dry skin for probably 20 to 30 seconds to remove the day's dirt and impurities and makeup even waterproof. And then I rinse it with water. It should rinse away completely and leave no film or residue or slimy feeling. All cleansing balms and cleansing oils are not created equally. Some don't remove waterproof eye makeup like others do. Others leave just this slimy film. I don't like those. The ones I like are down below. After I rinse that with water, I go in with my regular cleanser and massage it in for 
probably another 40 seconds or so, and then rinse that. Now, because I double cleanse, I don't use a toner at night. I don't really feel like it's necessary. I apply my peptide serum, and then about four or five days a week, I apply my retinoid, which for the past six months or so, as many of you know, has been Medicaid Crystal Retinol. Now, if you're not familiar with retinol, the order of strength from weakest to strongest is retinol, then retinol, then prescription tretinoin. So if you're someone with sensitive skin who maybe can't tolerate prescription strength or you want to see results but you don't want the hassle of the peeling and dryness and maybe retinol isn't quite strong enough for you retinol is a great middle ground my sensitive skin with rosacea tolerates it really well I saw brighter clearer skin in just a few weeks and I'm seeing continued results I love that all skin types even sensitive skin can use it because there are five progressive strengths to choose from so you can start at your appropriate level and progress as you go now, something I get asked a lot about this is where I started and why. So I moved over from another over-the-counter retinol product that wasn't as strong. So I started at level six and used it for a couple of months and now I'm on Crystal Retinol 10. Retinol is short for retinol to hide, which is proven to work 11 times faster than retinol at targeting fine lines, wrinkles, and uneven skin texture. And because the Crystal Retinol formula also has hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and vitamin E. It's also gentle and soothing. Plus, it's a slow release encapsulated stabilized formula that works overnight to maximize your skin's comfort while the retinol is active and doing what it's supposed to do to fight those signs of aging like wrinkles and fine lines. So basically, it provides quicker and better results without added irritation. It's also vegan and cruelty-free. The texture is like a light whipped lotion. I apply a couple of pumps over my face and neck and give it a little bit of time to absorb. It doesn't take long at all and it feels very lightweight. I don't get any redness, dryness, peeling, or uncomfortable tight sensation on my skin at all. It feels very hydrating and yet it works, which is why it stays in my life and why I will continue to progress in strength when I feel my skin is ready. Now I also couple it with the Crystal Retinol Ceramide I-10. I was using the six and I worked my way up to the 10. This is such a refreshing product because it actually treats effectively and doesn't dry my under eye area out. So this has been my eye cream that I've been using under my eyes at night for about six months too. And you can find both of these in my description box in my top pinned comment along with everything else in this video. The other two to three nights a week that I'm not using a retinoid, I use some type of exfoliant type of product because as we get older, our skin cell turnover continues to slow down more and more. So to keep our skin looking bright and healthy, it's important that we exfoliate. And I think that that's a step a lot of people miss. One product that I'm absolutely loving that's just so easy to throw on at the end of my skincare routine is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow AHA Night Treatment. So this has a 2.5% pH balanced AHA complex. It's supposed to be as efficacious as 10% glycolic acid to exfoliate while maintaining your skin barrier. Barrier. I'm all about maintaining the skin barrier the older I get. It's also got seven weights of hyaluronic acid and it's got niacinamide and a quinoa peptide. And I think that that's why this works so well at exfoliating while hydrating and not drying my skin out. But this is a night treatment mask type of product that you apply after your skincare routine. So I can still do everything the same and just throw this on at the end. And it's got this kind kind of gel watery consistency doesn't have much of a smell to it. It's kind of watery and then it just sinks in and I wake up in the morning, my skin looks nice. I'll either use this or I'll use another exfoliating or maybe a mask type product, just something to kind of revive and exfoliate my skin just a couple times a week. It's probably more like two nights a week rather than three, but it's definitely a step you don't want to miss. It can make a huge difference. Don't worry, I didn't forget about moisturizing, especially not at night when it's so essential. I just wanted to go ahead and mention exfoliating 
writing since I do that on some off nights from my retinoid and since most of the exfoliating products are done before moisturizing with the exception of this one, which is after. So one of my staple holy grail moisturizers is Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide. If you have drier skin than I do, La La Retro is great. I have others at all price points listed down below that I love for nighttime. I tend to go for something a little bit creamier and more nourishing at night that also has some really fantastic ingredients. This gives me more than just hydration. It's got nine signal peptides, pygmy water lily, which is an excellent source of antioxidants. It's soothing, it's calming. There's some other great things in here too. I also love the dispensing mechanism. It's very sanitary. Something I do though with this, because I have rosacea, is dispense a little bit of azelaic acid into the tub and mix it right in and apply it to my rosacea prone areas. If I'm really lazy, I'll just apply it that way all over my face. Sometimes I just keep it to the lower half of my face. But azelaic acid is a great, great ingredient to target acne, rosacea, sun damage, hyperpigmentation, because it actually targets the enzyme needed to make pigment. I just learned that. It also is antimicrobial and it prevents pore plugging. I find my skin is less red overall when I incorporate this into my routine. If I'm really flared up, which I was for a little bit, I'll use it morning and night, but now I just use this at night and I find that to be enough. By the way, why don't I tell you what this is? This is the Ordinary Azelaic Acid Suspension 10%. There's also a serum type product that I got from Amazon. It's really nice. I'll have that link down below. I'm blanking on the name right now. It's downstairs in my bathroom. But if you have dry skin and you don't like the consistency of this during the day under your makeup, you might prefer that product. After moisturizing, I go in with my brow serum again, which I don't think I told you the name of this earlier. This is the Redensifying Brow Serum from City Beauty, and I apply lip balm. I always apply lip balm at night. I either use currently Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm, a perennial favorite, or the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Gloss Balm. I absolutely love this and have made quite a dent in here too. Now, if you're wondering about facial devices, which are huge right now and very effective, I have several that I swear by that I'm using in lieu of Botox and filler right now. I'm just seeing how far they'll take me. Sometimes if I have extra time in the morning, I'll use them before I wash my face. Other times I'll wash my face and use them before toner. Sometimes I'll use my LED, my Zip, and my Nira all in a row. Sometimes I'll just use one. It just depends on what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I'll do them at night. I don't really have a rhyme or a reason. It's really just what I'm in the mood for. With the exception of my gua sha tool, I will use that in the morning before washing my face if I'm going to do it at all because I use that for depuffing and lymphatic drainage mostly, which I prefer to do in the morning if I'm going to do that. Now, if you want a deeper dive and more detail on that, I'm going to refer you to this video here where I go into at-home alternative for Botox and filler that really work. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and if you enjoy Everyday Beauty Made Easy because that's what this channel is all about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.